Hello and welcome along to the Oxford Football Show with me, Danny Parkinson. Four games in to the EFL season, a couple of games into the Premier League season as well. We've had some upsets and some absolutely cracking games along the way and I'm sure we'll have lots more as well. Join alongside me, uh, Liam Williams and Derek Clark from the Radio Yorkshire News team. Lads, thanks a lot for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks for me. And uh, let's move on to the first one because Leeds United picked up a win. Fantastic. Here we go, here we go, we're on, they're on the board, they're on the board at the very least. Uh, now Leeds United obviously picking up a 2-0 win away at Sheffield Wednesday, no one had them down to pick up that win to be perfectly honest, I certainly didn't, I thought they'd struggle in the next three games, but it shows you that's what football's all about, when the chips are down, everyone yeah. writes them off, they're going to pick up a win. Yeah, I think even the most uh, optimistic of Leeds fans didn't expect to go down there and pick up three points, I think the, the most they were hoping for would be a point, mm. um, it was damage limitation for a lot of them. Um, but not in their wildest dreams did they think they would go down there and pick up all three against a, a very poor, what looks like a Sheffield Wednesday side. Mm, that is uh, very, very true indeed. And uh, we'll analyse Leeds in a little bit further in depth in a minute. But first, let's hear from uh, Leeds United head coach Gary Monk. Gary, as a way day performances go, that was pretty impressive, wasn't it? No, we were very good today. We followed, um, we had a game plan and we followed it to. Uh, Pretty much, pretty much the, le the letter that we wanted to, um, that we envisaged. Um, so now that was pleasing, and and we got our just rewards again today. We got um, an important win um, for the players in terms of our progression, um, the improvements that, that I want to see from the players, which we've had in every game. But today was probably more for the whole length of the game. So um, so no, it was pleasing to see, and um, obviously to get the three points, very good goals, um, a really good team performance. Um, obviously has to be pleasing. And looking at it, um, you made four changes again today. You brought in Bridcut alongside Vieira. You seemed to really bring the best out of young Vieira today. Mm. No, I thought all of the team. I thought everyone. Um, like I said, I always pick a team or a squad that I feel that can follow the game plan that we have for each game and, and take it out there onto the pitch. And like I said at the start, you know, we're, we're still not the team that we want to be. We've still got a long way to go. But I think each day and each game that we've had, we've made those small steps. You know, and it takes time with these young players, and we've improved with every game. Um, and today was another improvement, and that's the most important bit. But we're still not the team we want to be. But today, in today's performance and things like that, those type of performances will give them the belief that what you know, which you can see in them, they believe in what they're doing and what we're following, and and that we know, given time, the potential that we have. You can see the potential in the team. So um, um, that will get better. But we know this league is unforgiving. It can get set back which there will be setbacks at times, but that consistency of performance, you've seen it coming, in, especially in the last couple of games. You said you wanted toughness from your team. You were first to every loose ball, really, weren't you, today? Well, derby games tend to... Um, something I spoke to the group about, um, obviously experiencing them as a player and as a manager. Um, derby games always have that extra, extra bit of spice to them. It was a great atmosphere today. It was a big crowd. Um, but we were very focused on our, jo on our job today, our game plan, and we followed it very, very well. And um, like you said, defensively, we were excellent. Tactically, we were very good defensively and offensively, we were dangerous. We played in a certain way offensively because we knew we could hurt them um, in certain elements. And I think we were very dangerous and we had probably, I think for sure, we had the best opportunities in the game and, and we looked very dangerous when we attacked. So um, to get the goals, which we deserved and, and, and we were the better team today. Um, and we're playing against a very good side in Sheffield Wednesday, who um, have had an excellent season last year. and. Um, or a benchmark for the league as well, so um, no, it would be a good boost again, another improvement for the players. Leeds United head coach Gary Monkler speaking after that game against Sheffield Wednesday, and Derek, it just seemed like a much more improved performance from Leeds United throughout. Yeah, it certainly did. Um, I think Leon Bridcut was a massive player for them. They were crying out for some bit of physicality in midfield. I think he provided them for a bit of fight, a bit of dig mm. uh, that they've been lacking. Um, in recent games, so I think that's he's, he'll be a big player for them. It was a bit of a saga before they could get him in, um, but I think they need players like that, uh, players with a bit of dig that's going to fight for the cause. Um, still question marks about the uh, defence, I feel, but the Leeds obviously it was a clean sheet and it was the good they got that, but there's certainly a lot to work on. I still feel they should bring in another um, defender and they're still looking for a striker as well. So not the finished article, but certainly a lot better than what it's been in recent weeks. Mm, you're right there and uh, it doesn't look like we can predict where Leeds United uh, will be uh, heading next because of course uh, they've got that game against Luton on Tuesday night but then it's Nottingham Forest away, Huddersfield at home, two tough tests early. Yeah but at the same time when you think 
they've just gone to Sheffield Wednesday where you don't expect them to get anything and they get the three points. It was a Wednesday side that dropped points against Burton though. Yeah, and that's sort of there's like, obviously you, something going you, on. You do ask questions then about Sheffield Wednesday, don't you? There haven't been many major changes. You want the Fernando Forestieri situation is not ideal, but it's um, an uncharacteristically poor start. It's, it's hard to explain why it's gone so wrong, mm. um, but I think at least it's a positive. Obviously, it's a big positive for Leeds. The question is whether they can do it against sides they expect to beat now. Mm, that is very, very true. And I call with the Huddersfield Town head coach David Wagner after the game. I think uh, everybody. Uh, who supports Huddersfield Town uh, can be happy today. I think we came in the game uh, very good. Uh, a few good chances in the first 10 minutes. The best one uh, from Kashunga, uh, where he maybe can take a little bit more time uh, and don't have to finish with the first contact. Uh, I think the first half was good. Uh, we attacked, uh, uh, not excellent, but okay. Uh, we defended well. No, no really chance for Barnsley, only after uh, set pieces and this is their strength, uh, what, we know, what we've known before. Uh, and then we create, uh, created and scored a great goal from Chris Löwe. Uh, this was uh, a typical modern fullback goal, give and go, uh, be brave, offensive, great strike, good finish, uh, uh, excellent goal. And, yeah, then we came uh, out of the halftime, another set piece, long through in, and we got the equaliser. I think uh, after this moment, uh, we, we needed a, a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes to come back into the game because in this time we lost the ball too early. We had uh, problems to keep the ball. We made some easy unforced errors. Um, and then we have to be honest, uh, we are lucky that we don't get uh, the 2-0 against us. Um, but at the end, uh, we in Germany, we say only the hard worker gets luck. And if somebody deserved this luck, uh, what we needed today to win this game, then this is this group, uh, their fighting and working attitude is, is unbelievably unbelievable uh, today and uh, the whole time since we start this season. Uh, so I'm very happy, very pleased for them. And I only can brace their, their fighting and attitude and working attitude because this is this is very, uh, something really special. and. That then Jonathan Hock scored the goal. Uh, I think uh, uh, this shows that there are uh, no limits <laughs> if he is able to score a goal. And what a goal! A great goal for him. So uh, was a great moment for him and and for us as well. So uh, great finish uh, to the right time. Yeah. Happy day today. David Wagner there speaking to TVY after the game. And if you want to hear that full interview, they can see that on tvyorkshire.co.uk. Make sure you do because he's an absolutely smashing interviewer. And uh, it's a fantastic question answered there. I want you agree, lads. As always. Uh, I like lots. listening to Wagner. He's um, certainly one of those guys you would... Um wouldn't get tired of listening to it, put it that way. Ah, yeah, you're right there, you're right there. An engaging chap. Oh, he is very engaging chap. And Liam, you've met him a few times. Mm. Um, what have you made of his uh, style of football so far this season? And the start that made, the top of the table, lads. I really like it, and I like him. I like that when he came in last season, it was there was work to do, especially to implement his style of football. When it's such a dramatic change, I think you need your own players to do it. So for the time being, it was sort of like... Well, see out the season, I'll bring in my own players, we'll do it our way, and four games in, like I say, top of the league. Mm, very interesting indeed, Derek. It's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I didn't think they'd have a good start to this season, just based on the amount of players they're bringing in, mm. and players from another country, i.e. Germany. If things don't go well, it takes a, time, a bit of time for players to gel, and they could be cliques forming and what have you, but they all seem to have gelled, um, no question, very quickly, um, and they're flying at the moment. Huddersfield, I think, I think the fans are realistic. I think they know they're top of the league at the moment, but I doubt many of them will be expecting that we stay up there um, mm. for the remainder of the season. It's a hard season, so uh, I'm sure the majority of them will be happy with top half place finish. Yeah, you're right there. But one team that aren't having the best of times, but did have a good time this weekend, uh, was Rotherham. You've been down to New York Stadium this yeah. year, Derek, and uh, he did look like Alan Stubbs was struggling a bit at the start, to be honest. Yeah, two heavy defeats. Uh, they were winless going into that game on Saturday against Brentford. Tough game. Brentford have started quite decently, mm. um, quite well. Um, and the pressure was, I wouldn't say mounting or starting to build, but you're wanting that first win and it's great, it sort of eases the pressure, he'll, be, he'll feel more relaxed now, Alan Stubbs after that. Um, great goal from Danny Ward and he's, he's another one that's brought a, a great number of players in there so it takes time for them to gel but 
I still feel that they'll be good enough to avoid relegation rather than if they play good football, they play the game the right way and I think they'll pick up enough points to. So let's talk Bradford, Liam, because you've got the pleasure of uh, going down there this weekend. Yeah, um, very interested to see Stuart McCall's side in action for the first time myself this season. Disappointed with the first half, you could see that he's implementing his style on them mm. and that was good. You know, They were playing the ball out from the back, they were, they were good in possession but they didn't create any chances in the first half at all and the goal came about in the first half for Coventry because they were so reluctant to play the ball long. And McCall, you could see he was on the touchline saying, you know, it needs to go long, we need to change things. And he said after the game that he wants his players to, you know, just show a bit more game management. When, when you're being pressed in your own half, don't be afraid to go along a bit more. And I think he conveyed that message at half-time and they were an entirely different team. It was like he put 11 new players out there. They were, they'd up the tempo, the passing was better, they were more direct. And, and I think in a space of about 10 minutes, there was two penalties, a red card and three goals and that was it. Mm, very interesting times indeed, and we'll be keeping a close eye on Bradford City throughout the season. But uh, before we go any further, let's hear from Stuart McCall, the Bradford City manager. Stuart, what did you say at half time? Can <sighs> you repeat any of it? No, listen, it wasn't. Uh, what's the kindest word? What did you say? Rollicking and telling off uh, an anger. Mm. It was what disappointed me was because we've taken pride in you know how we've played. Oh, since we've been in and we can take the ball and we can pass the ball but it's sometimes game management and you know after 10-15 minutes we're trying to get on to them that um, you know Coventry have come at us they've, they've closed us down we've, we've then got to then try to turn the game you know we can't keep playing the same way because it's not bringing us success you know 10-15 minutes into the game we're still trying to pass out and we're still t and, and they and I thought they were terrific you know um, you know Coventry first half I thought they were all over us they stopped us playing um, but we sometimes got to realise you know, in certain parts of games, it, it's like a naivety sometimes, but we've got we've got to change things. So it was good to get in at half time, and and just try to then try to play in different areas at part. Try to get us up higher up. Still play football if you can and get out. But they 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 had a plan to stop us. We thought you know with the work they'd done in the first half, they might you know tie later on. Um, but obviously they're, they're, they're sending off a, a, a turning point for us. But um, we've got in better areas, you know. And, I thought with 15, 20 minutes to go first half, we started getting a little bit more and playing a little bit more and getting higher up the park. Um, so, no, I want, I want to rant and rave at half-time. It was more a sort of, listen, let's let's learn from it. And still, still after the game, I, I was really disappointed with first half performance. Not um, because we were, were poor, which we were as in, in possession of the ball, just we kept trying to play the same way and it won't bring success. So you have to try to change it. And we try to get that on and thankfully at half-time, it, 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 we changed it around. So let's just have a quick roundup of some of the losers of the week and uh, one of the biggest losers uh, this week had to be uh, Barnsley. It was unfortunate for them, they were playing Huddersfield. I thought they actually played very, very well, yeah. but going down to a late winner like that, it, it, it doesn't help. It's a sickener, especially because it's a Yorkshire derby, you know, bragging rights, all that sort of malarkey. But Barnsley, to their credit, have been playing well the last... Before that Huddersfield game, they won their last two, so uh, Hegging Bottom certainly got them playing well. So I think that game I could have went either way uh, from what it seems like, so um, I don't think he's got much to worry about um, Barnes. I think, obviously coming up, it's a bit of a jump coming up from League One, but so far I think they've coped well. Mm. And Derek, another South Yorkshire side that haven't had the best of runs so far. Sheffield United really struggled this season. Yeah, Chris Wilder's got his, his work out there for sure. Uh, unlucky uh, on Saturday against Millwall to lose down there, but it's no disgrace. Um, but they've yet to pick up a win. Bottom of the of the table at the moment. Um, not looking good for the, the Blue supporters. He needs time, Wilder, to get that sorted. But mm -hmm. I tell you what, he needs to sort it out pronto because that's, again, like the Championship, a tough league. And, and if, if you don't sort it out uh, sooner rather than later, then you can be in a relegation scrap uh, mm -hmm. throughout, and that's not good. And one league that you certainly don't get much time in either to be there. Uh, lads, thanks as always uh, for joining us here on the Yorkshire Football Show. We'll have more next week.